You don't look a day over 12,000. Fuck you! 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 Hmm. Maybe another time. Hey, this is your boy Shatter here with you on another vid on YouTube discussing a, a very controversial subject. It may be not a big deal for most people, but for most fans of the franchise, they're going to say actually this was a big deal. Because to be perfectly honest, for the last 10 plus years, everybody pretty much been saying the same thing. This game is the worst game, period. And a lot of people are wrong about that and that's what this vid is going to be about and reasons why you're wrong. I, I hate that there's not too many people on YouTube that actually wanted to make a vid about this. Most people will play the game and show you why the game is good versus actually showing you why this game actually is not as bad as people have made it out to be. The funny thing is um, this game came out in 2003 and ironically in my opinion um, most reviews that came out in 2003 did not label this game as a bad game they all stated the same thing this game didn't meet our expectations and that's true I will never sit there and say that wasn't true because what was the gamers expectations the gamers expectations was we wanted a proper sequel we wanted a continuation of what we experienced in the very first Devil May Cry. Unfortunately, Capcom made the decision to not go in that direction. And they also had a director that did not really have the same views that was shared with the original studio that worked on the first game. Which also was the same studio that worked on Resident Evil 3. Because a lot of people don't know that this whole franchise was supposed to be a spinoff pretty much of... Resident Evil and and that's well I won't say spin-off it was more about it was supposed to be a Resident Evil 3 game period it was supposed to be Resident Evil 3 but since it was so different they went into the round to just say well I'll just spin it off do it like this do it like that other than that let's get to um, why this game actually isn't as bad as the gamers have made it see the people who have actually never played the game are the gamers and they're the ones that are telling you this game is bad that's messed up because they're giving you false information and to be perfectly honest they're going based off the information of other people have given them but I'll get back to that well first we're gonna say why is this game not as bad as you think it is based off of what they actually did get right one of the main things that Devil May Cry 2 did get right was, um, I will say, the look. And what I mean by the look, I'm going based off of how Dante looked. Did he necessarily need a uh, change? Did he need to be modded? Actually, no, he didn't. But the thing is, they did it so well, it didn't really change anything. It didn't really say, oh, I hate the way this guy looks. When I first looked at him, I was like... Yeah, they probably shouldn't have did that, but I kind of like the look. I liked his costume more than it did in the um, in the first one. This one looked a lot better. I will say that it it does, especially when you looked at some of the um, character models, not in game, but some of the pictures that was based off the the model. You were like, yeah, that actually is stylish. That that works. It, it may actually makes them look a little bit more better. I don't like the way. Dante looks in Devil May Cry 4 because I'm like cowboy boots really did you really have to go that far with his look 
then like don't even get me started on the new DMC that has nothing to do with his hair just overall the dude is just wrong everything about him everything about the game is wrong but we're going to get back to that later the other thing that they got right was they changed the little things with um, the amulet what they did with this they gave him a completely new amulet he no longer has that amulet because apparently it's still in Sparta and um, and he doesn't use the Sparta sword anymore he gave that to Trish what he's doing with this new amulet based on how the direction was done in Devil May Cry 2 was to basically have RPG like attributes added to his devil trigger really didn't change his weapon it just ha it just changed his devil trigger that one actually was pretty welcomed I, I like that I didn't really love it but I liked it it was something that they could have did a little bit better which will go into the the next part of this discussion um, what else they got right was they changed the devil trigger I did like the change I don't what I say was necessary not exactly but because of the fact that they did change it and it didn't look like really really bad they did it right it was it was one of those things you can't really complain about and most people who played the game they'll sit there and say and argue compared to maybe Devil May Cry 3 is ten times better Devil May Cry 3's Devil Trigger is is butt ass ugly and even in um, Ultimate Marvel Capcom 3 I don't like that it's, it's still ugly it's still ugly he looked like a damn a spotter and I, I don't like that but other than that um, the other part of the devil trigger is if most people that never played the game or like I've been saying they're going based off of other people's opinions and then they just automatically come to a justification that oh I won't play that what they didn't know is that if you ever got really low on health and you still had a lot of um, devil trigger gauge left and a lot of energy left if you activated your devil trigger with like 10 percent of your life left you would actually turn into his um, true Sparta form for some reason it's not called Sparta I don't know why but he looks pretty much like Sparta to be perfectly honest this actually looks better than Sparta in DMC1 he pretty much looks like a damn you know cicada going around kicking ass you know I don't know why he looks like a bug but he's so strong we don't care <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He 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 did evolved into this new Devil Trigger in Devil May Cry 2, and I was like, I actually like this one. He didn't even need Sparta Sword to really do it, so that's why I was like, that was a good ad. That was a really good idea. He kind of looked a lot like um, a new interpretation of Devil Man. You know, I kind of like that. That was dope. And most people haven't seen it, and I do have a bit of that, and I'll show you that while I'm discussing this. Too bad that wasn't something that um, could have been added to the game as a option. That you can just run through the game as him, you know, just in that form the whole time. You actually have to get a code to do that. And if you could go through the game like that, I think a lot of people probably would have been like, yeah, I like this game. This game is really fun. Um other things that they got right did they incorporated styles when devil may cry one came out it wasn't about style it was more about which devil arm you were using you know what I'm saying it wasn't about um, oh I can just go around just punching people in the face that's not a not exactly a style that's just pretty much a, a way you want to play but other than that what they did on this one that's why I sit there and say we could not have Devil May Cry 3 or 4 without Devil May Cry 2 because all the people who worked on those other games they took a lot from Devil May Cry 2 they took the stuff that worked that they really thought was a good idea the only thing that what people wanted from Devil May Cry 2 was to take a lot of the stuff from Devil May Cry 1 and expand upon it and that's one thing that people got to understand when you come to making your video games, when it comes to sequels, when it just comes to making a video game from scratch, if you want to make a 2D scroller, find all the things that you loved about t uh, you know, 2D scrollers. If you really love Castlevania, what was all the things you really loved it about that game? What do you really wish you could do in that game now? 
that's that's the concept you have to have and that's the what you have to look at when you're really trying to make a great game unfortunately that wasn't really used in Devil May Cry 2 I won't deny that I won't deny that in any way shape or form now when it comes to the styles we have they never really fleshed it out that's what Devil May Cry 3 did if you play Devil May Cry 3 then you know what I'm talking about we're talking about the the gunslinger style the ability to shoot more than one enemy at, at a time I my mind was blown when I saw that back in 2002 I was like that is great because I always wanted to do something like that in the first game that's a good idea they expand upon that Dante's mobility his ability now to evade at will instead of having to lock on to an enemy and wait till they you know shoot at you you don't have to do that no more I will say that actually made the first game funner I will say that I, I enjoyed the game more that way but because of the evade button it made the game more stylish based on how you played it being able to run across the wall though a lot of people a lot of the reviewers like well I don't see the reason why you would have to do that well if you would have played the secret missions on the highest level oh yeah you're gonna wanna be able to do stuff like that the run off the wall being able to double jump that's the other point I don't get to but I'll get to that later um the next one is there was a sword master style and that was part of you know being able to just do certain moves a certain way a lot of people never played with Lucy enough to even know that she had advanced combos I will show more video uh, you know clips of that there's a lot of stuff that Lucia can actually do and um, if it wasn't the, the only thing Devil May Cry 2 was missing was Royal Guard in my opinion that's the only thing that was added in Devil May Cry 3 that was it because everything else that's in Devil May Cry 3 they took it from Devil May Cry 2 and um, that goes to the next point um, being able to toggle between weapons people say weapons is really the guns I really wish they would have did that with the weapons then but based off of how those weapons were used like Vendetta it wasn't a devil arm that was the that's probably the biggest mis in my opinion that was the biggest mistake but I'll get on to that later as well if that if you could change the weapons along with the guns that would have been great that would have been really great and I, I think that more people wouldn't have complained about the game they would have complained about the game less if they would have kept it that way since we keep jumping to um, what Devil May Cry got wrong let's start that now this is pretty much what everybody should, should say and keep it at that what the, um, the studio one did wrong what Capcom Studio one did wrong with uh, Devil May Cry 2 was they didn't make it like Devil May Cry 1 it wasn't the same game and it wasn't a, a sequel that really is the major complaint that's it all this other stuff about the difficulty you didn't play the game long enough to figure out if it had a difficulty <laughs> I will say they did dumb it down a bit. That was a mistake. That's one of the other mistakes that they did wrong. They did dumb down the difficulty. But don't sit here and act like there was absolutely no difficulty in the game. That's incorrect. That's totally incorrect. Each character has a, um, a Dante must die. There's a Lucia must die. And, um, and you can also look at it as Trish must die. Because you, you can play as Trish if you look at it that way um, those levels are hard now if you want to sit there and say this is the other thing that I want to say about difficulty if you're going to sit there and say oh the game's not that hard because I can just run through the actual game that's fine I give you that because that's 100 percent true going through the game not that hard it really isn't it really isn't even on the hardest level that's not hard but when it comes to the challenges, which are the secret missions, if you if you play through all the game and you did all the secret missions and you did them on the highest level, you're going to get your ass kicked. I don't care how good you are. You're going to get your ass kicked. You can even pick Trish. You're still going to get your ass kicked. Okay? 
they you're still going to get your ass kicked every single time and um the one thing that i didn't like is um when it came to the system rank after you defeat a level you can pretty much get an s rank and still use a whole bunch of devil uh items like uh devil stars i didn't like that you know vitality stars i did not like that that was a that was a major mistake in my opinion because if you're going to play a game that's supposed to be quote unquote so easy but you can get an s rank with using devil star the whole time come on man and you're not getting penalized for it and if, if you do it's it's marginal it's very small now that's another mistake another game has been making well what they've been doing made the major mistake is they keep biting stuff off of the worst game quote unquote of the franchise that's where you really messing up you shouldn't be taking all the bad stuff and trying to expand on the bad stuff you're supposed to take the good stuff and expand on that not the mistakes <laughs> But that's some people don't understand that concept. The other stuff that um, DMC2 got wrong, by far, it has to be the camera. That that's that's in the top three. That really is in the top three reasons why this game is not as great as it should be. That was a bad idea to have the car, the camera that far back. It didn't make any sense. The only time the camera wasn't really bad was in the secret missions, depending on where you were at. But the, the camera always kind of like moved in a counterclockwise, depending on which area you, you move to. But since the, the room is literally a square, you can't, and it's it's kind of like the training room in Street Fighter 4. You can't really tell what's up and what's down because everything looks exactly the same. So that's what I'm sitting there saying. If you yeah, and you looked at it from a completely 3D uh, 3D perspective and not the 2.5D, which is what Street Fighter 4 is, 2.5D perspective, and a lot of people will debate there's no such thing. Well, you're looking at proof that there is a such thing. So don't argue with me. I was like, I'm not speaking on science. I'm speaking on video games. That's how they made that game. It's it's on a 2D plane, but it's 3D. That's 2.5D. Is it? It can't be. It can't be 2D, and it can't be 3D. It has to be somewhere in between there. That's what it is. Anyway, if that game is like I didn't like, that was the only thing I didn't like. Was um was that was my biggest complaint was the camera. The camera did have some issues. There was some there was some serious dead spots. Um, and the director's main goal, which is another reason why the game didn't do well, is they tried to make the game larger. That was stupid. And I, and I, and I don't rephrase that. I don't think he wanted to make the game larger. He wanted to make the perspective of where you were at larger. He wanted to make it seem like you were actually going somewhere. like you're, And you're not stuck in one spot. That was what what made Devil May Cry one good. A lot of people didn't like the backtracking, but guess what? It was supposed to be a Resident Evil game. If you played Resident Evil, and I'm not talking about five, I'm not talking about six, and I'm most definitely not talking about four. The game is nothing but backtracking. The, especially the first one. The first one was nothing but backtracking. It was some areas where you had to be in there at least five times, and that's not even an exaggeration. That's exactly how many times you had to be in a certain areas. Resident Evil 2, you got two characters. You, you're, they're both going in the same spot. And that's what I find very condescending about a lot of gamers. Resident Evil 2, you got two characters. Two parts. For some reason, they never cross each other, yet they're always in the same area. Nobody complained about that. And if anybody did complain about it, people pretty much mulled over it. They look past it. Here comes Devil May Cry 2. Pretty much did the same exact thing. Everybody named Mama complained about that. And I said that makes absolutely no sense. How are you going to sit there and say Resident Evil 2 is the best game of Resident Evil and then Devil May Cry does it. Now it's the worst game ever. Are you kidding me? I guess you're sitting there going based off what style of game it is and not just a feature. And I'm looking at it as a feature, not style of game. If I'm able to play a game as a different character, that's great. 
Nobody had a problem with that with Ada Wong and Resident Evil 4 was separate ways. The only people that complained about that was the people who had GameCube. Those only people that complained. Anybody else? They were like, no, I love that campaign, that scenario. I love that. That was fun. I played it myself. I loved it too. <laughs> there was some messed up parts, especially when that cage fell down. That's probably the only time I ever got scared playing that game because I was not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Other than that, not a scary game, just an action packed game. That's a whole nother other subject, but let's keep it going. Um, the other thing that I feel that Resident Evil 2 got wrong Kamiya. No Kamiya. Not, and not just Kamiya, his, the studio that he directed, The Little Devils. If those him and those people didn't work on this game that's why the game didn't succeed I think even if with the um I don't know I might be incorrect about that I won't go I won't go there I won't go there but because the Camille was not involved with this game which today I still feel that was probably Capcom's biggest mistake ever in Capcom history that was their biggest mistake their second biggest mistake was letting that guy go go to platinum games and letting him do his own thing that was another big mistake and then it wasn't just him it was the other people the guy who started resident evil you let him go then you let clover go it's like a lot of people say nas the rapper been taking l's i don't think anybody's taking more l's than ea sports and capcom i don't think if Nobody can take more L's than this, these these two entities. These these people, they can't. You can't take any more L's than these guys. They're con every year. They're taking L's. They're like the Washington Wizards of of video games right now. They're constantly taking L's, and I was like, I don't see how they're still in business. <laughs> and I think the only reason why they're still in business is because we got we got kids that are pretty much supporting these guys and no grown-ups are supporting them they're like no nah, I'm tired of this company I'm sticking with platinum games I totally respect that platinum games is on point especially with Metal Gear Rising you you gotta learn from your mistakes unfortunately people aren't doing it they're they will rather continue to make the same mistakes than to make better decisions that's not that's not good business you're pretty much wasting your time